Okay, here's the quadrilateral story as presented by Mr. Braddock. Uh, this is what you're going to have to do for full credits on your quadrilateral story when you present. Uh, first, you have to draw this map. You have to tell me what are the different shapes. So on, uh, there's three different families, the parallelogram family, the trapezoid family, and the trapezium family. Now the differences between these three families are uh, the parallelogram family has two pairs of parallel sides. That's, these are the main properties. The trapezoid family only has one pair of parallel and the trapezium family has no parallel sides whatsoever. Talking about the parallelogram family exclusively here, uh, parallelogram family also has the opposite sides congruent as well as parallel uh, and it also has diagonals that are also congru uh, also uh, bisecting each other so this side and this side are the same and so are those two sides now underneath of the parallelogram family we have the rectangle which is a parallelogram so it has two pairs of parallel sides that are also opposite and congruent it also has 90 degree angles and diagonals that are bisected but since it is a rectangle these b diagonals are also congruent so instead of different um, tick marks they're all three tick marks are the same because the diagonals are congruent. Rhombus, also a parallelogram family, two pairs of parallel sides marked appropriately that are also opposite congruent, but all four of them are congruent, so I have one tick marks all the way around. This time the diagonals are not congruent, but the diagonals are perpendicular. They are bisected, so I'm going to do two tick marks there and three tick marks on the other diagonal because they are not the same size diagonals. They are not congruent diagonals. But here I am going to put diagonals are perpendicular. So those were the rectangle and the square, or sorry, the rectangle and the rhombus. And when they t get together, they make the square so the square has all the properties of both. It has the right angles. It has all four congruent sides. All sides that are, well, two pairs of sides that are parallel to each other. It has diagonals that are bisected and congruent and perpendicular. So the diagonals are perpendicular and congruent in this case because it came from the rhombus and the rectangles uh, family. And that finishes off the parallelogram family. Trapezoid family has one pair of parallel sides, so, so does the isosceles trapezoid. But isosceles, even when we talked about it in uh, the triangle family, isosceles meant that we had two pairs of sides that were congruent or one pair of sides that are congruent. We call these sides the legs. The ones that are parallel are the bases. Now the only difference between trapezoid and isosceles trapezoid are the legs are congruent and the diagonals are also congruent, so you want to say that. Now the diagonals are also, uh, they are congruent so these two tick marks are the same and these two tick marks are the same there and there. That finishes the trapezoid family. The trapezium family, nothing is parallel in the trapezium itself, but its subcategories, the kite, has two pairs of congruent sides, the ones that are consecutive. It has diagonals that are perpendicular and the short diagonal is bisected, so I put three tick marks on either side of that diagonal. The longer one is not bisected, 
For bonus points, you might want to say that these two angles over here are congruent, and the other two angles are bisected, so they're cut in half there, that side with that side being congruent. And then the last one over here, the deltoid, does, it doesn't have any markings on it because nothing necessarily is congruent. You can be have congruent sides, but it's no parallel sides. The difference between trapezoid, uh, the deltoid and the trapezium family is that the deltoid is what we call concave, meaning it has a diagonal that's outside of the shape, and the trapezium is convex because its diagonals are inside of the shape. Now the only other thing that you need to mention for your actual story is that I'm going to ask you what, how can you on a gra graph paper or grid paper determine whether or not these are parallel sides? Your answer better be the slope formula. I'm going to say, okay, if you answer slope, I'm going to say what is slope? And you're going to tell me the formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If slopes are equal, then the sides are parallel. That will get you one point. If you tell me that the slopes that are opposite reciprocals are perpendicular, then that will get you another point. Then I'm going to ask you, well, how do you figure out if they are congruent sides or congruent diagonals? And you're going to tell me, well, Mr. Braddock, that means the distance formula. And you're going, I'm going to ask you, okay, what is the distance formula? And you're going to write down the square root x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. And you're going to say if the distances are the same, then those two sides or those two diagonals are congruent. And that's as much as you would possibly need to write on your story to get full, if not more, credit.